I'm Sister Pat Colas, a uh, ministering in counseling in Chicago, Illinois. And I've been thinking about my vocation as a sister, especially this year of consecrated life. And uh, the Pope Francis has called about waking up the world. So I was trying to wake up my vocation as well. And as I thought about, when did this all start? I pictured the beginning of the Star Wars movie where there's a rolling script where it says, a long time ago in a galaxy far away. So I, I thought far away to where it all began for me. And I think that with it began with a God, of course. And that's where all of the we're enfolded in God's love, and God calls us forth to go forth with this love. And I think the people who caught it that I knew of were my mother and father. And when I picture them, I remember um, my father was away in the Navy, and this was after Pearl Harbor. And uh, my mom, uh, I, I was born before he got back from the service. And so, um, I remember that the interconnections of how my mom was connected with her faith and how my dad's faith grew. And we eventually had to move out of where we were to move to a bigger house. And we came to a place outside of Gary. And that's where I first met sisters. And the sisters were the group that I eventually joined, the Poor Handmaids of Jesus Christ. They were a, a group of, of sisters. They weren't very large, but they were very active. They did teaching ministry, and I was in the school with them. And they not only taught us the, the basics of school, they also taught us about some ministry things. Uh, that's where I first was taught music. And my mother and father were involved in not only the things of school and in church, but they were also involved in things with the sisters. So, say, for instance, if their washer broke down or they needed somebody to pick up something, they were involved as that as well. So we not only got to know the sisters as teachers in school, but also as real people. And they were people who were, were joyful. They did have their problems as well and their frustrations. But they were very centered. Uh, they were very pray prayerful. And we caught and picked up a lot of that. So by the time that I was finished with grade school, I wanted to keep that connection. I had an inkling that I would like to be a sister, but it wasn't anything that I let out or told people about. So I was connected with the sisters during high school as well, so that by the end of high school, I was, I was really had an image of what I wanted to be as a poor handmaid, as a sister, as a person of the church. And I thought I would probably be a teacher and be a teacher for the rest of my life, wearing a habit. And when I entered finally in August uh, of 19, it was the end of, um, of July of 1962, uh, things never were the same, and I don't mean that in a bad way. There were lots of changes in the church. There was a Vatican II that happened, and every year something different, slightly different happened so that we adapted to these changes in a good way. Um, our habits changed, uh, the way we prayed or did things changed. Um, I still thought I would be a teacher, this, this was also the time when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And so there became a lot of changes in how I looked at politics, how I looked at the world. And it, things began to just develop in ways I hadn't considered. There were more and more different connections as I was a teacher. I got connected with uh, youth groups in the choirs, in music school. Um, I eventually went back to school for religious studies, and this was the time that sisters were 
moving out of just a classroom or a hospital. And we were actually looking at different ways of ministering with people in the church. And so uh, eventually I was given a position in a parish. Um, it was very interesting because the uh, pastor uh, where I went, he decided to go on a sabbatical and I was left to manage day-to-day -day, uh, church affairs and how did I do that? So I learned a lot in a very short time. Um, things did not stay the same and I was also asked to go to a pair to um, work with our own sisters in uh, like a paraprofessional counseling. And so the, um, I think I could really say, I, I really got stretched in ways that I never imagined. And yet yeah, it was exciting because I worked with our sisters in a different way, other sisters. So by the time I finished there, I went to study counseling in Baltimore, Maryland which was a real experience because Baltimore is on the edge of a lot of military base bases on the edge of Washington, D.C., where the, um, of course, you know, the, the whole government ideas and, and interactions are um, happening there. It was also where um, the bishop's office was. And I started getting connected with people who were working in different areas of the church, besides even the uh, the counseling I was studying, I also got worked at an army base uh, as a counselor, and that gave me an insight into army life and what was happening. Um, by the time I finished there, I had um, I found some pos ministry positions in Chicago, and so I worked at a couple of churches in uh, pastoral counseling there. Uh, the around that time, my community also asked me to do work with people who were first coming into our community and also doing some what's called vocation work, where I you actually go out and meet people, invite them to see what it's like to be a sister. And that was very interesting work to do and the people I met. And the interesting part of it was as I journeyed with people on their vocation work, um, many people did not enter the sisters, but they did find the mission in their life where they felt God was leading them. And I found that to be very enriching. I developed a lot of skills in how to interview people, how to, how to do testing to see if this was not just a career, but a whole life direction for them. So um, uh, around this time, I was also helping my parents who had gotten sick because that is a ministry that is very uh, much respected. And if you need to do that, we are allowed to do that. Um, by the time my mom and dad had died, uh, I was able to go to Germany to meet with our sisters from various countries and to do a program with them. And I was also able to go to Eastern Europe to visit my mom's relatives in Slovakia and my father's relatives in Lithuania. And this was around the time that the Berlin Wall had fallen and that various countries in Eastern Europe were being freed. I was able to, uh, and this is how the network works and how the spirit weaves in and out of my life and the lives of, I think, everybody. And uh, a sister I had known who gave me some directions on how to get to Lithuania called me and asked if I would be interested in doing some ministry there, as well as, of course, the counseling work I was doing. And so um, she and I and a group of other religious went to Lithuania for three summers trying to help the sisters there get reestablished after being in hiding during the communist eras. And um, we worked with helping the sisters there come out of hiding, reestablish their novitiates, figure out how to uh, help them assess women that were coming in. Uh, we worked with the bishops there. We worked out of the Washington, D.C. bishop's office 
for Central Aid, Eastern and Central Europe. Um, after I had worked there, of course, I was still working in counseling in the Chicago suburban area. And um, what happened, um, even though I was mainly focused on the counseling ministry, I did do some, still some workshops in summer for sisters from Eastern Europe. And uh, that was very rewarding. Um, at this point in my ministry, I'm thinking of shifting my ministry away from individual counseling to looking at perhaps how I can help others do some preventive issues with mental health. How do I keep people healthy? and especially their mental health, which affects everything else. So the spirit is still surprising me with various ways that I can figure out how to work in the church, in the world, and wherever this takes me, because I know that God continues, as we I was talking about before, to wake up the world. And Pope Francis is a very good model of how to do that. So uh, I leave you with with prayers about how you can continue to work in your life and discern in your life how the Spirit is going to work. And be prepared for surprises because they will come. Be, pre be prepared for lots of connections in your life. You were, are going to be surprised to what is going to happen. And um, just to continue to believe in God's love for, as God loves me, as God loves you, and how God wants us to continue to spread that.